Teresa, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with me. Um, I wanted to have a chat because you are a, a lead electrical engineer. You've been in the industry a long time. Um, you've worked your way up the career ladder um, and I really wanted to get your point of view on how you found the data centre industry as a female. Um, and the best place to start really is, has electrical engineering, was it something that has been a passion or how, how did you get into it? So, it's, I mean, I think it's it's a bit of a boring story, but I think it's an, um, my dad is a chemical engineer. Wow. Okay. Um, and I think I, I think we were slightly brainwashed in a very smart, subtle way since we were <laughs> very little. Uh, and yeah, I mean, in the kitchen table, my conversations with my dad were about how to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius <laughs> and things like that. From a young age, it, which is very, very. Um, I, I feel like like the advantage that I had from seeing that in a parent was huge right yeah. um yeah. so then my older sister my older sister and older brother I'm the youngest are a lot older than me so I saw them go through college very when okay. I was very little so that that also made a difference and they both studied engineering okay chemical engineer and my brother's a mechanical engineer wow um, so you've got the whole team yes so so I think that was just kind of it just kind of happened um, yeah. at some point. However, until the point I was maybe 14 or so, I thought I was going to be an artist. Um, okay. I was I was actually really into art, painting, drawing. I, I was in some contest and that I won and things. So I really thought that's what I was going to do. Okay, yeah. Um, and then when, when I got to college, my parents didn't pressure me into it, but I realized I liked it. Um, yeah. And I just, because I knew so much more about engineering <laughs> than I knew yeah. about the arts or anything, just felt comfortable. And I went into it and I liked it. Um, okay. I think in general, it's because I like the challenge of it. Um, I was never a person who math was, math wasn't hard for me, but it wasn't yeah. easy. Um, okay. So I liked the challenge. It was a challenge. And I think that was what kept me engaged in engineering because it was never easy. I think if it was easy, which art came easier to me, I would get okay, bored. Yeah, yeah, so yeah kind of you're happened. definitely a type of person that likes a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So th that was that was part of it. That, that, that was the whole influence of my family was usually what made it. And then my mom is a philosopher, which I think maybe it took me more on the artistic side but i do i do think that at the end of the day my my love of art and my mom being a philosopher and too has at the end made me more of a well-rounded engineer i just yeah. had to lean into the more technical side sometimes or leaning yeah. more into the art and creative side sometimes but yeah that was it so yeah so you obviously joined went to college and, and done your electrical engineering degree um how was college? Were there many other females on your course? So my situation was really different um, because I went to a school, uh, it's called St. Louis University, it's in Missouri. And I went to a school that had an aviation and engineering program altogether. Wow, um, okay. And in that program, the electrical engineering class was a little smaller than the mechanical and um, any aviation or um or aerospace engineering. So my class was maybe about 20 people, 20, okay. 25 that were gonna graduate with me. And for some reason, it was like 60% female for the first wow. time in history. Like it had never happened before. And it was so obvious that it was the first time because the professors would comment on it all the time. In fact, a lot of my profession, professors, which were, of course, they were mostly men in their 50s or 60s okay, yeah. were a bit confused because <laughs> they had never <laughs> had a class of mainly females and it was not just females it was very outspoken ones um wow. it was it was actually really fun it made it made things really fun for me but it confused people because it was the first time it happened in in any of the engineering classes in, in there actually That's amazing um when i look at my graduation pictures it's a lot of girls in my class um but i think it was a fluke because i walked into a mechanical engineering class once and there were no women 
like I okay. like it was so it was not a normal thing. So that was very lucky for me yeah. and helpful. Um, I can imagine because I do think that it, it it helped me find a little bit more of a community when I was struggling with some of the classes that were harder because there is a barrier to entry when there's just all the guys that talk all the yeah. time live in the same dorm and all I of that imagine. um so the the girls were just friendly mainly by some of them just by nature it was yeah. just society has made them a little more accommodating so they would even feel feel obligated sometimes to just reach out and reach say out. hey yeah. are you doing okay do you need help with this and just be friendly and that just kind of gives you an opening so i think that was helpful for me i'm not saying the guys oh, I can mean. imagine they were not but there was definitely a helpful aspect to there being girls in the class no, that's really interesting because, um, yeah, it's nice to hear that. And it shows that if you've got more females in, in a class that you, you get that sense of community, you, you've got a fallback. You, you can all kind of come together and help each other. Because I think if you if you are the only female in, in a classroom, then you do feel slightly isolated that you haven't got anyone around. Um, so that's absolutely amazing to hear that you, that you had that experience going through college while you were getting your degree. And. Have you always been in the data center industry or was it does that come later on? So the data center industry came later on. However, since day one, I was in what it's called, and this is a very vague term in the industry, you will know, in the mission <laughs> critical space. Mission critical, yeah. A very yep. vague term, but the way I look at it is um, if you can't lose power because things will be bad, it's probably <laughs> mission critical. Yeah. Um, so I, I've been doing that since day one. Um, my okay. first job, I actually got my first job about eight months before graduating. So that last semester was kind of hard because I was like, I already have a job. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I want to start already. Um, but yeah, so I, and it was in consultants. It was in consultancy. Uh, it was a consultant in Missouri. They're based in Kansas City. Um, they're kind of a medium sized consultant and they're specialized in pharmaceuticals. And oh, okay. food, the food, in the, the beverage industry and pharmaceuticals, um, I mainly did pharmaceuticals. So I had big projects with the biggest uh, pharmaceutical companies in, in America, well, in the world, but in their uh, factories in the United States. And it was actually the best way to learn critical power because these yeah. were factories that were they were making batches of medication or base medications that they would sell to other pharmaceuticals uh, and each batch was millions of dollars so all the yeah, control imagine. power to that and all of that uh, in a highly highly controlled environment you couldn't yeah. have a blip you had to have clean reliable power to it all the time so that was my introduction into critical power um, it was actually a little more complex than data center design i find it okay slightly uh, because there were other aspects to it, like different chemicals that you need to rate your appliance yeah, can and things for it and all that. Um, but it was a great introduction and it translated really well into data centers, which I've been doing for about four years now. And uh, yeah, about four years now. Yeah. And how did you transition into the data center industry? Was it something that um, a potential recruiter came to you about? Um, how, how did how did you get, how did you get into it? It was actually really interesting. It was a recruiter. So I, I was in a I was working in consultant um, and in a, a small consultant firm in St. Louis. And I didn't know any different out there, any that there yeah. were other <laughs> bigger options uh, or yep. different options. Right. And then a recruiter from back then Facebook reached out to me. <laughs> um and saying hey, would you like to do this and I was like I have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> pretty much <laughs> I was like sure uh, so I talked to her and she kind of explained uh what Facebook then was doing with data centers and all of that um and I interviewed for that job and I didn't get it and to okay. be fair I wouldn't have given me that job. I had no data center experience and barely knew much about data centers, but that kind of just like kind of piqued my interest. And okay. I started doing my research in data centers and I realized, yeah, I can definitely do this. And I think about six months or so later, I, I interviewed for Amazon and ended up working at Amazon. 
Oh, okay. So, so, so for the last four years, solid data centers. Um, do you think there's been any challenges in the data center industry being a female engineer? Have you, have you come across any challenges? Oh, 100%. Yes. Um, I was very lucky. Uh, my team at Amazon was incredible. Um, okay. Amazon gets, I think Amazon gets a reputation for being a harsh place to work at. Mm -hmm. And it is. But it wasn't for me because I just I had a great team. Um, I was hired by a guy, but within a few months, uh, we were reorged a little bit. And I ended up, um, my manager was a woman. Oh, um, wow. And a woman who is probably the best manager I ever worked under. Um, Amazing. Because she wasn't only a good person, but she was also a great manager. What yeah. I meant by that is that she knew what she was supposed to do. She knew her place was to protect her team so they could do their job. And she was really always willing to just be there for you as a human and yeah. remove obstacles for you to do your job. Um, yeah. She was also about, I would say, maybe 20 years older than me. Okay. Um, and like at a different stage in her life and everything. And it was so nice to me to have that to look uh, up to, up to. Yeah, um, as I can a imagine. woman. It's just, it, it's just, it's nice for you to see how your future could look, could look like. And she would also have advice regarding like interactions in the industry and all of that. Um, and how women are judged more harshly in certain things. And like she would take time to explain that to me. So it was really, really nice. Um, that being said, um, I started my job at Amazon during the pandemic. Okay. Um, I always tell my uh, husband that I thought that was helpful for me and it was an advantage because I was fully remote. Oh, and yeah, I, can imagine. I could struggle by myself in, the, in silence in my living room. Okay. And I thought that was actually an advantage for me because it okay. gave me time to catch up without people having to make judgments of me. Yeah given the way I looked or my height or anything like that, <laughs> uh, you know? Um, yeah. So that was actually, I always thought, told my husband, I thought it was an advantage for me to start my job at Amazon during the pandemic and like it being remote. I think it's an unspoken advantage for women when working remote at first, at least to gain your credibility. Because that's, yeah. that's the thing. I always feel like I have to come into a new room and show everyone that I know what I'm talking about. And then everything's fine. But yeah. you first have to show that you know you've, what you're talking about. You've got to kind of prove, prove why you're there and your, your abilities to be able to be um, an, an engineer. Yeah, so to be fair, Amazon is a harsh place to work, but not, it was, my team was great. I never had an issue. I actually ne I never felt more equal to people That's than amazing. I did in that team. And I think it just speaks of that team that yeah. I was in. Um, I, I transitioned into TikTok later and TikTok was a lot more of a startup. And yeah. in a startup, I did um, I, I did, did not find many women. And and I don't wow. think it was, it was lack, I don't think it was TikTok's lack of trying yeah. to hire women and stuff, but I do, I, I ended up concluding that the environment, the, the startup environment might be less attractive for women. women. Um, I feel like maybe we take less risks and yeah. TikTok was a risk. I okay. mean, when I started there, they were already talking about banning it and <laughs> banning the app in the US <laughs> and it kept going through my time there. So it was seen as a risk to take a job there. And it's just, there's not as many programs and structures and like guardrails put in there. So, um, mm -hmm the mistakes you do in a startup could be a lot bigger because there's not yeah, the course that there is. So I feel, I think that in general, women are, have been just raised to take less risk. Yeah. Um, I really don't know how I just ended up doing saying, just I'll do it. Let's see what happens. Just um, just, yeah. Because I have been pretty risk averse in the past. Um, but, but yeah, so, so that was, I think, Amazon being a big corporation and all of those programs that people talk about, about diversity and inclusion and all that, they do work. 
like yeah, I think they do. Th there will be isolated incidents where like th there is discrimination and stuff, but at least I saw in my team that did work. Like yeah. I, I think it did. Having work. that having that diverse team with the female leader it, it, it brings unity for in for everyone I think I think that's the importance of having diverse teams um because it everyone gets the opportunity to feel like they belong um and I think it's so important for people to be able to enjoy their work environment because they feel part of a team and not necessarily isolated because maybe they're the only female or or their circumstance is different to everybody else. So I think creating those diverse teams is so important for people's growth uh, and their career um, and how far they go within a company as well. Um, if you could give one piece of advice for any females watching or someone looking to get into the industry, what would it be? I think it would be if you find a uh a female like that is about maybe 10 20 years older than you um that is in that industry um try to create a relationship there and i think that's also advice to females that are at that stage in their life too to try to open that door for like younger women to ask questions um yeah. i think it happens a lot that um women have been especially older women than me have been the only ones in the room, the only women in the room yeah. for so long. And we lose that, that connection, that female connection and like that uh, way to communicate with each other. Um, yep. Because a lot of the time women have been in the defensive be like, I'm the yeah. only woman in the room. And the problem and what that translates into is <laughs> if I make a mistake, I'm making a mistake for all the women in engineering. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if some guy makes a mistake, it's just his mistake. So <laughs> I feel like sometimes um, it goes both ways for the younger engineers to reach out. Yeah. If you find a, network. Female, a female that you can, yes, create your network. And then for the older female engineers to like open those doors. Um yeah. Because I think that that's important because I think there is a lot of value to what women bring into oh, the definitely. Yeah. It, it, men bring a certain amount of value, women bring a certain amount of value. And I think that is the, the important fact is that the teams need to be diverse to be able to get all those different elements that each person can bring into it to make the best team possible um, and, and making everyone feel comfortable. Um, and I think like mentoring having mentorship within a business um buddying people up so when people are joining especially females that if there is another female in the business make sure those doors are open for each other make sure the the community's there within the business but there are so many different groups um and pages on linkedin um and i think really yeah i think if you can find a great group of other females that are, are in the same industry with the same values uh, having that that support um will really help people uh, and, and women be able to to kind of lead for, with success you know one thing that i think is really important and that goes back to what i said about amazon is a very established corporation so they put programs together uh, yeah. that are very official like mentorship and all of this and one of the reasons why i think programs like official programs for training for mentorship are important is because when you come in as a new person in an industry there's a power dynamics there yeah. so if you ask in your boss hey i would like to do this i would like to learn this i would like to get this certification i would like to get yeah. this mentorship um i've had situations in which my boss would tell me hey just ask yeah but i it's not it's not conducive to to you just being able to express what you need. Um, I think a lot of the times corporations need to have official programs or blanket programs for everyone. It's like, hey, this is available for everyone. everyone Take it yeah. or leave it instead of you having to ask every time. So like yeah. those official programs are important. Definitely. Um, it's just keeping those doors open, that communica communication lines there. So everyone's got a voice. Everyone kind of grasp all the same material um, and have the same opportunities to be able to proceed and grow within themselves well thank you so much for your time today ACOM are very lucky to have you on their team um, and yeah I will um, well, I look forward to speaking again soon yeah absolutely thank you thanks Teresa thanks